I have had this Pixel 7 Pro for months now, and while I have tested some other phones throughout that time, more on those later, I kept on coming back to the 7 Pro, so now it's my daily driver. This phone costs $900 and up, 128, 256, or 512 gig. And as a content creator, I use my phone a lot for content. So anything less than 256 gigs probably won't work for me. So I upgraded to the 256 gig version. My original 128 gig Snow Pixel was a gift from Google through Team Pixel. I used it for a few weeks and then I gifted that one to my hubs. He loves it, by the way. And I bought the 256 gig Hazel version. Uh, personally, I love the color. I have used two of these since they came out. The other color is obsidian, but I like the hazel one because it matches my eyes. Now, if you came from a Pixel 6 Pro, this is about the same size as the Pixel 6 Pro. So an old case will fit on this new phone, but you do need to modify where the button cutouts are because the buttons did shift a little bit. This is a three inch by 6.4 inch phone with a 6.7 inch display from edge to edge. I love the Quad HD Plus display. I have it up at peak brightness here so you can see it really nice and bright. It is definitely a very smooth 120 hertz experience and it does get bright at up to 1500 nits peak brightness. It's almost too bright for nighttime use but it's very, very easy to see this in the sunlight. I did mention that I use this for a lot of content creation but I'm also a heavy power user user and the battery generally gets down low by like 5 p.m. So I do have to charge it at night, though my husband doesn't charge his till he goes to bed much later at like 10 or 11 p.m. It does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that can do a 50% charge in 30 minutes with a 30 watt USB-C charger. Google recommends getting their 30 watt USB-C charger. It is also Qi wireless compatible. I usually just stick this on my Pixel charger whenever I'm at work and it has battery share to share some juice with your other Qi products if you set them on the back. Now in terms of processing and memory, the 12 gigs of RAM does give it good memory and the processor is Google's Tensor G2 with the Titan M2 for security. I have had a few occasions where an app froze or it was unresponsive. Mostly that happened when I was doing things like using Adobe Rush when I was editing some 4K footage or I'm in Instagram while editing a video reel that is in 4K. But for general usage, if you aren't doing a lot of video editing, everything else is smooth as butter. One thing I wanted to point out, because you know I harp about this all the time, is the fingerprint sensor. Oh, did you see how fast that was? Let's do it again. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's so much faster. I'm so glad that Google listened to our feedback on the fingerprint sensor because this one is definitely an upgrade. It is much faster and more accurate. It does not work as well with a screen protector. Like I purchased this piece of crap screen protector from the Google store and I took it off because that thing sucks so much. <laughs> when I have the screen protector on, I did notice that I had to press a lot harder for it to register. And yes, that is with the screen protector mode enabled in the settings to make the display more sensitive to touch. So yeah, I got rid of that thing. I'll try a new one later, but for my review, it's fine. It'll be fine for a couple of hours. Let's hope I don't drop this phone. <laughs> but it is Gorilla Glass, I'm not too worried. With the original snow colored pixel that I ended up giving to my husband, I didn't scratch it at all. And I took it with me to a camp in New York, so it was totally fine. I also am a big fan of face unlock. It actually works. Although in terms of security, the fingerprint sensor is far superior. It is pretty quick and responsive, though it cannot be used to unlock any apps because it's not as secure as other biometrics, just the screen. So I have mine currently set up to do face unlock and I just have to swipe up to get to my home screen like so, and it unlocks with no issues. I'll do that one more time so you can actually see the screen. I'll turn around so you can see it. Now, if I have the display at always on, I can just wake it up and then unlock it. It works! There are some built-in speakers on the top as well as down here at the bottom. I would say the built-in speakers are pretty clear, but they are lacking on the low end, so like bass. So I generally just use them for vocals and podcasts. For music, I switched to my Pixel Buds Pro, and when connected, they sound great. They use Bluetooth 5.2 to connect to this phone. The phone is also Wi-Fi 6E ready. It's also quite fast over my Wi-Fi 6 network. When using this phone on 5G around Denver,
paper. I also noticed that it had no issues. I have the millimeter wave and sub six version, which is also unlocked from Google. Now I did want to mention, I'm able to make videos like this one because of y'all. So if you are new here, subscribe and become a part of this amazing community that we have on this channel and check out my Patreon or buy me a coffee links down below to see how you can support the channel and join folks like Homie, JS, Orlando, Day Day, and Mipsy who just became patrons. Or you can join the fine folks over on Buy Me A Coffee like Mac Attack for one-time support or access to live streams. So the last section that I wanted to spend some quality time on with this phone is the cameras. I was fortunate enough to go to Team Pixel's camp up in New York in the fall and I got to try this out in a variety of scenarios. So I have a ton of photos to work with and give you examples with. I also post a lot of these pictures on Instagram and Twitter if you prefer to look at photos uh, more higher resolution than what you can get on YouTube. So first we have the 50 megapixel camera on the back. This lens is an 82 degrees field of view and it's an f1.85 aperture. It keeps impressing me. Whenever I am taking photos in the snow, which to be totally honest, it does not white balance on snow well and often makes it too blue. So I use manual controls or I edit them in post, or I'm taking photos of my pin collection because I have a lot of enamel pins or beautiful fall leaves. It just wows me. Google's night sight makes gorgeous photos happen in low light. Like I took some out of a plane and they looked amazing. And it's very intelligent knowing when to shoot in regular mode and when night sight is enabled or needs to be enabled automatically. I also tested the phone with astrophotography and I got some incredible results. By teaming up with other content creators we made some pretty magical things happen. And when I tried making this animated photo of the stars, it just came out so, so nice. Now, to be completely honest, it's rare that I want to switch over to portrait mode because the natural bokeh is done so well, giving your subject crisp details and gradually blurring the background to make photos look professional, not overcompensating with jagged edges. I also tested this along with real tone, which can accurately display skin tones for everyone in your photos while hanging out with a couple of my colleagues, Enobang and Saf. Check out their YouTube channels if you have not already. So portrait mode is still great as well, but I barely use it now. And you can always go back and add background blur, remove unwanted subjects or unblur subjects via the Google Photos app. There's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which does have autofocus. It also has a 125.8 degree field of view and an f2.2 aperture. I have used this tons of times during hikes in the mountains around here. It always gives me great landscape shots, really great HDR. The sky looks beautiful. All the trees and the mountains look great. High quality lens correction as well along the edges. So there's no weird curvatures. The 48 megapixel F 3.5 telephoto camera has a 20.6 degree field of view. It's not as good as the Samsung Galaxy lineup, but honestly, it's rare that I actually need to zoom into anything at 30 times. The only times I really use it is whenever I'm zooming in on like a deer and I'm trying to see what it's doing or I see a sign in the distance and I try to read it because my eyes are bad. Like <laughs> that's pretty much the only times I use it is so I can zoom in and read things. The five times optical zoom is fine and the farther you get with the zoom, the more potato-y it's going to look. And that's because it's going to be a digital zoom. Now to be completely fair though, the Google Pixel 7 Pro looks way better than the iPhone when it comes to zoom quality. And it does a lot of really good good computational photography when it comes to zoom to kind of figure out what's in the picture and what needs to be in focus. So with this lens setup, you can use macro mode. And while not a big thing for a lot of comparisons, I've actually seen a lot of people skip over this part. It's something that I use consistently to take photos of like my Sailor Moon collection. By the way, I have a separate YouTube channel all about Sailor Moon if you want to check it out. I am very happy that I can take photos without it blurring the edges of the subject or warping a straight edge due to lens curvature. It corrects these problems that I have had with other phones and it gives me a true macro photo with the entire subject in focus. Now, yes, you can zoom into something to compensate for a lack of macro, but you end up with a lower quality photo with less bokeh and less clarity as a result. 
bokeh, bokeh, tomato, tomato. Taking top-down shots is kind of annoying as it always flips these photos upside down, even though I'm holding it at like the perfect, perfect distance and perfectly parallel to the table beneath me, but it always flips them upside down and it drives me crazy because I always have to edit them. I've experienced this on both 7 Pros that I have tested. If Google could fix that problem, I would be very happy. I feel like that would just be a quick software patch. It, I don't think it would take very much to make sure your pictures don't keep on flipping upside down whenever you're holding it parallel to the table. <sighs> now, if you watched my CES content, all of those shorts were filmed on my Pixel 7 Pro at 4K. So if you want some idea of how it looks, how steady it is, it's very smooth. Check out that playlist on my channel. Let's talk about the front camera. I would say it's not the best selfie camera that I have used. I would argue that the Galaxy line generally has better ones. This one has a 10.8 megapixel f2.2 fixed focus lens with a 92.8 degree field of view. The colors that you get are a little bit saturated, but they generally look really nice to look at. And the wide angle lets me get some really awesome groups shots with friends and everybody stays in focus so it looks really good. I took selfies all over the place in Tokyo with some of my friends that live over there and just by myself around the Sailor Moon Museum because I'm a weeb. So I have plenty of examples to show you. <laughs> So the Pixel 7 Pro, it definitely has some quirks like the top down shots flipping upside down, the processing not being as powerful as I would like for 4K and some loss of touch sensitivity whenever you put a screen protector on, but that's kind of a thing that happens with a lot of phones. All of those are really minimal issues and I'm an abnormal user. So even the battery life, I wouldn't mark that against the Pixel 7 Pro because I know that I use this a lot for content creation via mobile. So I have no issue with recommending this product to, you know, normal users, especially since it's secure and you'll get updates for several years down the line to protect your device and your data. I love this phone and I've been using it every single day, even though I've been testing other ones that I'm going to be reviewing on the channel as well. I asked you all in a community post if you wanted to see some reviews. You said, some of y'all said yes, so I'll do some of them. Watch this playlist to see how well the Pixel 7 Pro did as my main camera for CES shorts. I actually put them into a playlist, so it's kind of like watching a long format video or watch this video that YouTube thinks that you would like. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have a Pixel 7 Pro as well. Well, and I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.